Hello and welcome to Exeter Life, a podcast about the people, places, and events that comprise life in Exeter, New Hampshire. I'm Lara Bricker, and Exeter also happens to be my chosen hometown. I've lived here since 1998 and written the Exeter Life column since 2013. This independently produced audio version of Exeter Life launched in 2020. This week, you may have noticed the village of ice shacks along the river downtown this winter. Fishing for smelt is a long tradition in Exeter, and while the ice is mostly melted now, and I've heard a few people might have lost their shacks over the last weekend, I did have a chance to visit one of these fishing villages last month out on Newfields Road with Mark Damsel, his wife Missy, and their regular fishing friends. I'm heading out to the smelt shacks. That was just the start of my smelting adventure, that trip out a long trail that had been packed down by a snowmobile, and then I had to cross what looked like a gangplank on a pirate ship to walk out onto the ice, and that's where I set out to find out what is the allure of the smelt. Are they really good to eat? No? Old timers will say yes. Okay, because I know... I think they're amazing. Old, okay, yeah. See, I'm not a, I'm a big fish person, but, but they're not... not they're pretty oily, right? Or just, I consider it a fishy, I, this I is as even, fishy as the fish as you can get. I don't see for me, like... Tom, you they, do you like the, you like the smelts? Yeah, I love them. I think we fry them up and the meat just falls right off the bone. So how do you cook them? What's, what's the recipe or do you just toss them Corn in? Cornmeal, the... uh, fry them in oil. Yeah, I cook them and then grab them by the tail and the meat just falls <laughs> right off the bone. Once you have them, I don't want to say they're like trout uh, or... Uh, Cod, but they're tasty. Okay. I gave them to uh, Lorraine Dion. She's from Canada. For 20, 30 years, I've given her my first cat. She's 90. Gonna turn 90. She's really? about three feet tall and weighs about 33 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> the first catch every year. I just gave her some a couple weeks ago. I had only caught maybe about a half a dozen. Her eyes lit up like she was a kid in a candy store. This group I met up with had been fishing together for many years. Brian Tebow and Tom Coleman met Mark when they were fishing as kids. But while they all say their love of fishing is strong as it ever was, it's really not like it used to be. Uh, I mean, we used to come out here when I was a kid, and it was like catching hundreds and hundreds of fish. And now it's just, for me, I think it's been more about seeing everybody back to, to doing it, all the shacks out here. Yeah. It's, it's, I don't know, it's just like an old pastime. It used to be a lot more old timers that kept it going, and yeah. now it's just, yeah. just us. Mark remembers heading out to fish in Stratum near the end of Butterfield Lane on the river. It was once a mecca for local fishermen in the winter. And there's definitely not as many people out there as there used to be, but he's also noticed the other changes in the fishing. That's back in the day when we used to shovel fish off the river. So what do you think kind of led to them not being... Well, there's a bunch of research being done right now by UNH, but I think it's uh, pollution. Yeah. Septic, dog waste, climate change, global warming. I think they say, too, the uh, the water's warmer now, so they stay out in the ocean longer. Yeah. But they, their, their migratory instincts is to come into the river and spawn. So, while the fishing isn't what it used to be, that sense of camaraderie among those who head down to the river to fish in the winter is as strong as ever. Tom and Brian point to the role fishing played in their pivotal teenage years and that it continues to play today. Pretty much our friendship was based on, like... Fishing? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. What was appealing to, to us when we were younger was coming out here and just being able to be left alone, like our parents would never want to cross that bridge. <laughs> so it was like this boundary where we, we knew we could come out here and we didn't have to worry about being uh, bothered by anybody. Um, yeah, I grew up right off Front Street, so did he. He grew up right near Shooter's Bob. Yeah. yeah right next door to And uh, yeah, we used to ride our bicycles out here. Yeah. Yeah. And, be like near frostbite you know, <laughs> riding bicycles in the winter. So what time. keeps you coming now? Now it's just kind of like reliving our childhood. 
Like any fishing trip, there are some stories that grow better with the retelling, like the time somebody had a muskrat come through the hole or supposedly a man who got surrounded by coyotes while he was inside his shack one night. And there's also some longstanding traditions, like chronicling the season with a black sharpie on the walls inside the shack, and also what happens when someone catches that first smelt of the year. It's, you, it doesn't matter if you're from New Hampshire or Maine. Uh, the tradition is the first oh, fish. don't put that on there. Why not? <laughs> what? First fish of the season, you have to bite the head off. Okay. And it's Get tradition. It, eat it's it raw? Like, it's not something we made up. It's been okay. a thing for I don't know how long. As the crew outside was regaling me with their fishing stories and that lovely story of biting the head off of a smelt, Mark's wife, Missy, was staying warm fishing inside their shack. And yeah, she said she wasn't a huge fan of the taste of smelt, but she does enjoy the pace of fishing and spending time on the river. And she and Mark have been fishing together for a long time. So did you start fishing because Mark got you into it? Yes. Or okay. I had, I, my dad was in the Air Force, traveled around. And 30 years ago, Mark and I met and we started coming down here. So was this like one of your yeah, first dates? He brought you down actually, to the... Actually, probably. He said, do you want to go Pine down to the... Garden was our first date. Okay. <laughs> and then he said, you got to Pine Garden. You want to come to my smell check? <laughs> Basically. Never done anything like it. Yeah? Never. Yeah. It's kind of fun catching fish. Mm-hmm. Something different. I'm not sitting in front of the Netflix. Yeah, I know. Marathon. <laughs> Which I will do. Yeah, I'm, that's, um, that's my game plan when I get home. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's actually kind of fun when you're catching fish. It's a blast. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing about ice fishing. You never really know how long the season will last. Some years they get a good long stretch and others they just get a week, maybe two, where the ice is thick enough and safe enough to stand on. And given how the ice looked to me this week when I went out for a walk, it kind of seems like this season is wrapping up. And so as I wrap up this episode of Exeter Life, and you haven't gotten enough of your smelt fix for this year, I'm going to leave you with a song about smelt fishing. It came to me from Eric Sinclair, who spent many a winter fishing with his late father, Francis, along the local rivers. The song is called Winter of 92, and it's on his album, There Are Songs to Be Sung, released in 1995. When I was a kid in the 60s, in New Hampshire in the winter time My father would take me fishing with him When the river got a good bridge of ice We fished on the New Market River In a shack with a hole in the floor Just a ways in off of Old Great Bay it was one among thirty or more We'd sit in that shack With a lantern and a stove A basket between us To bring the catch home There were six lines with spreaders Going down through the pole Where the water was black And the tide ran slow We'd wait for the fish to bite Wait for the fish to bite We drive in his truck To a farm on the hill Overlooking the river and the bay We'd stop at the house To see Junior and Ruthie Buy us a new box of bait And we'd walk down the hill On a path through the snow And we'd get out on the ice By a plank from the shore And as we passed the other shacks We'd call through the doors How are they biting today? 
And we'd sit in our shack With a lantern and a stove A basket between us To bring the catch home There were six lines with spreaders Going down through the hole Where the water was black And the tide ran slow We'd wait for the fish to bite We'd wait for the fish to bite There were times when those fish would be biting So fast it was all we could do To haul in the lines and get the fish in the basket And a new piece of bait on the hook But the times when they weren't We'd stare at the hole And listen to the tide lift the ice by the shore once I brought a radio and knocked it down the hole Well, I can still hear the silence today Well, now here in the winter of 92 It's been ages since I caught a smelt but it's the very first time in 65 years That he hasn't gone out there himself Well, first it was his knees, and now it's his hands And the doctors who don't seem to know So here's one to help us remember, Dad All the fish we pulled out of that hole when we'd sit in our shack with a lantern and a stove A basket between us to bring the catch home There were six lines with spreaders going down through the hole Where the water was black and the tide ran slow We'd wait for the fish to bite We'd wait for the fish to bite